Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to my May TBR, which is going to be extremely ambitious and aspirational because I have dreams and goals of making May my best reading month of the year so far, specifically because I am so excited that I am participating in co-hosting a really fun month-long readathon called Escape the Readathon, created by Lexi over at Books with Lexi. This is a, like I said, month-long team-based readathon, and I'm so excited that Lexi asked me to be a team leader. She does have an entire announcement video about the readathon in case you missed it, but what is most important for me and my monthly TBR is that I am the team leader, is that I am a co-team leader for the Team Thrill Seekers. My co-host is the lovely Mel from Mel Lenore Reads, and I'm pretty competitive and I'm motivated, so I think we are going to win this challenge. It's not too late to sign up, so again, go watch that announcement video. There is a Discord and an official sign up form, so go check that out if you wanna sign up, if you wanna join me on Team Thrill Seekers or any of the other teams that speak to you. It's going to be a really, really fun month of reading. I cannot wait. And the way I'm structuring my TBR for this month is a little bit interesting because we do know some of the prompts that we're gonna be reading for throughout the month. There are 10 main, they're called building prompts, and the idea is we have to keep submitting books to those prompts. And once we get enough for a certain prompt, we unlock that building. And then once we do that, additional prompts are given to our team. So I don't know all of the prompts that I'll be reading for and fulfilling this month. I also don't know how many books I'll be reading for each prompt because our team just gets to keep submitting them until things get unlocked and achieved. I love that it keeps us guessing a little bit and that means that we'll get to make changes to our TBR throughout the month. I think that will help keep it a little bit fresh and fun, but the planner in me also loves to have a good bulk of books and prompts to plan for, especially because I'm going to try to continue creating my regular content throughout the month as well. So you will hear about some May arcs that I plan to read for an arc vlog, as well as a bunch of book of the month books that I'm going to be reading for a book of the month vlog, but exactly when they get read throughout the month is completely in flux. So hopefully that amount of chaos is okay with you. Also, I have to mention the thing that I love about these prompts is they are very broad, open-ended, up for interpretation. It's very not difficult to find books that fit these prompts. I can find multiple of them. I'm excited because this means I should be able to fit a lot of books from my physical TBR into this list. That's kind of going to be my goal is to prioritize my physical TBR as well as my May arcs and then just slot in, you know, audiobooks that I don't own physically whenever I need to. So let's go ahead and go through the 10 prompts and the two or three books I have roughly slated for each one. So prompt number one is called Good Fortune and it's your most read or favorite genre. My most read and what I often say my favorite genre is, is mystery thriller. I own several of them and a couple that are on the top of my list are first of all, a new purchase. I bought this on my Vegas girls trip. It's One of Us Knows by Alyssa Cole. This is the author of When No One Is Watching, which was another thriller that I did generally enjoy. She's also written a whole bunch of romance that I haven't read, but I'm excited to read her newest release. Don't know anything about the plot or anything other than that it's a mystery thriller. And then a mystery that I've heard a ton of great things about, Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. I don't know how I haven't read this book yet, given that I've heard such great things about it. I think the sequel is already out now or like companion sequel or something. So I just need to get it read. May feels like the perfect time. All right, prompt number two is The Unfair Wheel and it's a book that's at the top of your TBR. Again, extremely easy to fulfill because honestly, every book on my physical TBR, if I pick it up to read for the readathon, it's at the top of my TBR. <laughs> But also I think this will be a good prompt to use to focus on my May arcs because they are priorities for me. I have to get them read before the end of May, preferably by their publication dates. But um, two that I'm particularly excited about are The Heirloom by Jesse Rosen, which I believe is a contemporary book with maybe a little bit of romance in it. And then Another First Chance by Robbie Couch, which honestly is like tip top of my TBR because this is the newest release by one of my favorite authors. He wrote If I See You Again Tomorrow, which is a queer romance with like a time loop sci-fi element to it that I loved. It was on my favorites list and I can't wait to see what this author writes next. I think this next book is also a queer romance with some sort of sci-fi element to it. Not sure what it is, but no matter what, I'll be reading it and I cannot wait. 
All right, prompt number three is food court and it's to read a popcorn read. To me, a popcorn read is any book that I go into for pure entertainment. I'm not necessarily expecting like big literary merit out of the book or intellectual lessons or meaning out of it, which is not meant in a bad way. I think a lot of mystery thrillers fall into this category because you just gotta keep turning those pages. So I could fit in As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson here, which is the third book in The Good Girl's Guide to Murder young adult mystery series. Definitely one that I'm in it for the fun, not because I expect it to be like an earth shattering groundbreaking book. No offense, Holly. And the other one I have picked out is Mistakes We Never Made by Hannah Brown. This is another May arc that I have an ebook copy of. I believe it's a contemporary romance set on like a road trip. Just sounds light and fluffy and fun. Honestly, not too deep. All right, the next prompt is a fun one. It's called Cutthroat Circus, and it's to read a book with a cover that matches any of the hosts of this readathon's YouTube thumbnails. So basically you can go to the channels of any of the hosts or team leaders, scroll down, you can pick a book that's been featured in one of their thumbnails. You can pick a book just with general vibes or colors that match one of the thumbnails. Really fun and up for interpretation. Right now I only have one book picked out for this, but I assume that if I need to pick out more books for it, I will be able to because there are so many videos to pick from. But the one I'm going with is Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. And the team leader whose video thumbnail I base this off of is Ashley from Ashley's Little Library. She featured this book in a video and a thumbnail and she had a really good review for it so I'm very excited to read it on her recommendation. It's a mystery thriller about people who I guess trade murders, kill for me, kill for you. So should be a very fun time. All right, the next prompt heads up is to read an author you've read from before. So many options for this prompt. One, I have a NetGalley arc called Attached to the Hip by Christine Riccio. Comes out in May. I have read the author before. So easy to fit it in there. I've also got another book of the month book, Family Family by Lori Frankel. I have read two of this author's books previously, so definitely looking forward to getting to this one. And then another recent purchase and a very anticipated book for me, as well as a lot of other people, Funny Story by Emily Henry. I've read all of her other adult contemporary romances, so excited to get to this one as soon as I can. All right, then the next prompt we've got is Horsing Around and it's to read an intimidating read. Of course, this could be like a big book that I know is intimidating for a lot of people, but it can also go in other directions, like a genre you don't read a lot of, a format you don't read a lot of, maybe a book you've had on your TBR for a long time and you're excited about it, but for some reason you've just been pushing it off. I'm going to go for a genre I don't read a lot of, and it's books with like magical realism or fantasy elements to them. I don't always love them, but I've got a couple on my TBR that I consider intimidating. So we've got Wayward by Amelia Hart. I believe this is kind of a historical fantasy type book. We'll see how it goes for me. As well as The Husbands by Holly Gramazio, which I think is more of a contemporary book, but it's about this woman who finds out that her attic keeps like spitting out new husbands for her. I don't really know what that's about. It sounds a little bit weird. Weird is not always in my comfort zone. So I'm considering it an intimidating read because of that. All right, then we've got Bullseye Battle, which is to read a new to you author. Again, so many possibilities for this prompt. I've got one more May arc that definitely fits in this prompt. It's Waiting for Friday Night by Sanithia Williams. I believe this is an adult contemporary romance that's giving like a Southern football vibe. Never read from this author before, but have heard good things. Then we've got the prompt No Strings Attached, which is to read a book that a friend recommends. I'm really excited for this prompt because first of all, I could finally get to Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. This has been personally recommended to me multiple times by my friend Gwen. Not only does she think I'll love it because I've enjoyed Lauren Asher in the past, but also this book was on her favorites list of last year. And the way she's been raving about it makes me really want to read it. It is a chunky, chunky book, but I might just love it enough to fly through it. So I would love to get to this book in May. And then the other book that I have penciled for this prompt so far is I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetis. This book was gifted to me by my friend Danielle and I've been putting it off for a while, apologies Danielle, but on my Patreon when I was doing my May TBR and content planning, I showed my patrons all of my physical TBR books and asked for recommendations. Which ones do they want me to read first? Which ones can I take their recommendation and use for this prompt? And this was one recommended by Danielle on that video. So I want to honor that. I want to finally get this book read. I believe it's historical fiction. I'm not sure if it's young adult or adult, but either way, I think I will enjoy it. So need to just 
finally get it read. Then let's talk about the prompt hard hitter, which is a five star prediction. These are hard for me. I actually struggle sometimes to put the pressure of a five star prediction onto books, but one I'm fairly confident about is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, another contemporary adult romance. Abby Jimenez has just been on a roll recently. People are loving her. People are loving all of her books, but I feel like just more and more people love every book that she puts out. This one is no different. I've seen great reviews so far. Her last two books have been five stars for me, so if that trend continues, this should be five stars as well. And uh, yeah, how can I not read this book this month? All right, and then the very last prompt is Funhouse, and it's a poll pick. So basically you just have to put a bunch of books into a poll, have people choose which one you read. I am going to be doing this on Patreon throughout the month of May. So once I start prioritizing this prompt, I will pick books probably off of my physical TBR, unless I haven't gotten to all the arcs yet, but I'll put the options in there and then let the people choose once I'm actually ready to read that book. So could be any of the books that I already talked about or some of the ones that are still sad sitting on my physical TBR shelf wanting to get read. And plus, like I said, there are so many prompts that I don't even know what they are yet that I'm going to have to read books to fulfill. As you can see, there's a lot in total. So who knows how many books I will end up reading in May. I've got no big travel plans for once in the last several months, which should allow me to just hunker down, read my books, stay in my routine. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about and what your thoughts were on them, any that I should be particularly excited about. Also, let me know if you're participating in this readathon. I know I just spewed on and on about how I plan to read so many books, but there really is no pressure. When you sign up, you put in how many books you typically read in a month, and that's used to calculate how many books each team has to read to unlock each building, if that makes sense. So you're only committing to how many books you normally read in a month anyway. So not everyone has to get crazy about reading 20 to 30 or more books. The pressure is low, but I personally find it fun to plan books for every prompt. I really hope that I come back to you with a May wrap up that is equally as productive but we will see. All right. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.